Can you notice any difference between this photo and this photo? Well, I guess you can because one looks amateur and the other one looks professional. But what about these two? Exactly. I've been shooting photos and videos professionally for about seven years now and I noticed that we tend to do the same exact mistakes when we start our photography journey. And in this video we're diving into the biggest ones made by beginners and more importantly how to fix them. To introduce the first one I'm gonna ask you a question. Would you build your future dream house without having a plan and a practical vision on how every space will look like? I'm pretty sure you won't start by posing the first brick. Instead you'll probably go around to find some inspiration, do some mix and match between this style and that style, maybe ask architects to make you a plan based on your preferences so that you can basically visualize how it's gonna look like. In photography, it's the exact same thing. You can start by going out, clicking random photos, or you can create a mood board, which is a fancy word to describe a collection of images, colors, and ideas that help you define and visualize the concept you wanna capture in your photos. It's like a roadmap for your creative process, ensuring that you have a clear vision and direction for your shoot. Many beginners simply over overlook this crucial step, leading to a lack of focus and coherence in their photos. And you can see it. Creating a mood board is actually very simple. You can start by gathering inspiration from magazines, websites, social media like Pinterest. Pinterest is amazing, I use it every time. Look for images that evoke the emotions, the colors, the style that you want to capture in your own work. Since I started mood boarding before my shooting, my photography improved 10x. Because during this process, you come across so many cool visuals and concepts. It can spark new ideas is making your project way way better than you first imagined. Once you have a mood board, use it to guide your decision on everything from lighting to wardrobe, from composition to editing, so on and so forth. Now sometimes I share my mood boards, experiences and learnings in my free weekly newsletter. So in case you want to join thousands of other aspiring creatives, just leave your email using the link down below in the description and you're gonna be into the list. And talking about composition, let's go back to your dream house. Would you have a sofa in your bathroom? What about a shoe rack in the kitchen washing machine in the garden yeah probably you will not want any of those I'm sure and same thing goes with photography there are a few composition rules that can make or break your photos it's about arranging the elements in your frame to create appealing and engaging photos one common mistake is actually not using the grid in your camera the grid is a simple tool that can help you align your subject and balance the composition you can turn it on whether you're using a phone or camera it doesn't really matter both of them have it turn it on and use the rule of Thirds. I made a video about it. I'm gonna leave a link down below in the description So check it out after this one But also there are so many other composition techniques that you can use But is it really important to have them know them and practically use them to guide your framing another composition mistake Very common among beginners is having a messy background Distracting elements in the background can take away from the impact of your subject Remember every photo should have a subject and if you have a messy background You're gonna distract the focus from that subject and people will just lose focus before you you snap that photo. Take a moment to check out your surroundings and adjust your angle or remove any clutter that might be stealing the spotlight from your main subject. If it's not possible, do that in post-production before posting your shots. Even if you don't know how to use Photoshop, today is super easy with Canva or any other tool to remove any unwanted element. Then there is another big thing that holds beginners back all the time. But before we move into that, if you enjoyed this video and you want to learn more about photography and how to build your business out of your passion, consider subscribing and hit the like button. It's free, but it helps a lot. All right, back to thinking about your dream house again. Something that you'd love to build or maybe buy in the near future. The question is, are you really thinking about a $300 million penthouse in the middle of Manhattan, top floor with amazing furniture? Or are you thinking about something you might be able to afford? <laughs> yeah, while I'd love to buy unlimited properties in the world, the reality is that I simply can't. But this is not holding me back from planning and dreaming about my own little two bedroom villa in Italy. <laughs> and when it comes down to photography, it's very easy to fall in the trap of thinking that you need expensive gear to create beautiful images. The truth is, while having a high quality equipment can help, it's not a magic solution to creating stunning images at all. Zero. Like, no, I personally started my videography journey with just an iPhone 7. And the videos I posted on Facebook at the very beginning actually landed me paid clients moving forward. They were just passion projects that I shot for friends in gyms, restaurants, 
clients just with an iPhone 7. And I was able to capture the attention of potential clients and showcase my skills even with an iPhone. So instead of spending all your money on the latest camera gear all the time, invest in learning and improving your skills. And the best part is that there are plenty of affordable alternatives for education. YouTube obviously is a great one. Or if you prefer a more structured approach, I love Skillshare because it's super affordable yet high quality. I also host all my seven plus courses there and you can access them all for free for 30 days using the link down below in the description. Make sure to focus on mastering the basics and I'll guarantee you'll be able to create amazing images with any gear you have in hand, even if it's just a smartphone. Moving on to the next one, we are going serious here because it is a mistake that 100% of beginner photographers do at the beginning, obviously myself included in the first place. Let's say your house had an amazing initial plan and you managed to build it exactly like you've imagined. It's 90% ready, but you're just missing the final touches, which include the wall colors. What about making every room different? Maybe one red, one bright green, or one yellow fluo, or maybe paint the outside walls with rainbow colors. <laughs> No, you're not doing that, right? And you should not do it with your photos either. In the age of Instagram filters and powerful editing software, it's very tempting to go overboard with post-processing. But you know, over-editing can often make your photos look unnatural and detract from their original beauty. In fact, I can recognize 99% of the times whether a photo is edited by a beginner or a professional by simply looking at the colors. When editing, the key is to enhance your image, not completely transform it. You can use subtle adjustments to correct maybe exposure, contrast, color balance, but avoid excessive retouching that makes your photos look artificial. Obviously, when we're starting off with editing, we all love that clarity slider. We all go crazy with it at the beginning. But trust me, try to keep it between my minus 20 and plus 20. Same thing with saturation, dehaze, and sharpness. Unless you're shooting portraits and editing photos with people is actually very, very challenging. And in this video, I show you a few powerful strategies to make your subject pop. Click here and I show you something very cool.